Today I will be giving you a tour of our homeschooling rooms. This is our main homeschooling room, which also happens to be our living room. The most used items in this room are actually the comfy couches and the coffee table. And we have shelves to store all our most used resources so we can get to them easily. Both Maria Montessori and Charlotte Mason thought it was important to expose children to beautiful things, so I really wanted some beautiful art on our walls. And the clock on the wall has been really useful in teaching the kids to learn to tell time. On the opposite wall, I love how our Cavallini posters look, and beneath them is our ancient history timeline. It's just a watercolor line on the top with the years 6000 BC all the way to 500 AD marked out on it and we will be using it all this year as we discover the ancient world. Our calendar lives on this picture ledge on the wall. I pull it down during calendar time so the kids can move the ring and update the weather and then I put it right back up. Next to the calendar is our new unit study area. It's just a place for us to have all of our unit study books together and display projects that we've done. Part of our mantle decor right now is our Elsa Besco's Around the Year poetry book. And we also have these sweet little day of the week gnomes. My children like to move the current day that it is forward. The piano is new to us. It had been on my wish list for a while and we were actually just gifted it by family members who are downsizing and the timing couldn't be more perfect as my daughter is about to start piano lessons this fall. Currently on top, we have some wooden dinosaur puzzles from our prehistory unit, zinnias from the garden, and a book on Alexander Calder, who is our current artist. Next to the piano, we have our little meditation chair with our globe pillow there, and a basket with some baby toys, some books, and little stuffed animals and rings for her to play with. We have a beautiful quilt that a friend handmade for the baby, and we put her down on it, and the kids will read her a book or give her a toy, or we'll have her do tummy time. And it's just a fun way to do a little baby school with her. Next is our cabinet, where most of the resources we use daily are stored. I will go shelf by shelf, starting with this first shelf here on the bottom. Starting in the box on the left, we have Charlotte's Web, which is our Quiver of Arrow literature book right now. We have uh, these gel pens go with the gratitude journals. We have my clipboard there is for our circle time. And behind it is Sing a Song of Seasons, which is a book of nature poems that we use during our circle time. Also on this shelf, we have Egyptian Mythology and Pyramids, which are just a couple of books for our Egypt unit that we are doing every day during morning time. We have The Story of the World, Ancients, Volume 1, which is our history spine for the year. The two binders there are our history binders. The left one is my son's and the unicorn one is my daughter's. To the right of that is the Story of the World in CD format. I keep the Logic of English Foundations materials that we are currently using regularly in this magazine holder. And to the left of that, I have some books at my daughter's reading level for her to choose between. I've got some Usborne books, which are from my first reading library. And these ones are from uh, Miss Rhonda's readers. I believe this is from set two. And the other magazine holder there is actually empty. Um, I'm saving it for when my son might have, um, we might start him on Foundations A. On the middle shelf here, in the corner is some music books. Um, I've got those tucked in there because we don't use them very often. This one was for me teaching myself guitar. We have the Good and the Beautiful Safety Unit in this binder where I put it. I have... Um, extra prints of worksheets and coloring pages and such in the floral binder that I will pull out to give to the kids when needed. 
Then these two binders are my kids' portfolios. The zebra one is my daughter's, the blue one's my son's. I stick finished work in there. These are books for our unit on time and telling the time. And next to them, we have our learning clock that we use to practice. On this side is our math basket. I have a separate video on what's in our math basket, so I will link to that here. The only addition is this pink box that has some pink and clear and white beads in it for my daughter to use during math time. On the top shelf, this basket holds foundations materials we don't use frequently. A bucket of tri erase markers with a cloth to wipe them off. And this set of hourglasses is from Erin Condren, and we use them to make sure we are keeping our lessons short. The globe was at my in-law's house, and I asked if we could have it. I pull it down when we're using it for something, but otherwise it lives up there. Next, I'm going to show you the library. It's right off of our living room here, and it's one of my favorite rooms in the house. Our wall full of bookcases obviously holds a lot of books, but there are also some games and Montessori materials on these shelves. I plan on doing a more in-depth tour of the bookcases in another video, so I'm not going to go into detail on them right now. On the opposite wall, we have the Sling bookshelf. I've had this since my daughter was little. And I like to use it to display our seasonal and upcoming holiday books. It currently also has our chalkboards from Chalk Full of Design. I will link them below. And next to the sling bookshelf, you can see our basket of work rugs. The kids use these, uh, especially for Montessori lessons. They'll put them out on the floor and then bring the material and work on the work rug. The other side has our geometry cabinet, our number rods in the middle there, and the map cabinet, which has some practical life activities on the top of it right now. The map cabinet has several Montessori puzzle maps in it. So this one is the world. There is also a puzzle map for each of the continents, except Antarctica. And this one happens to be Europe. There is a piece for each country in the continent. We also have one for the United States of America with the states. The geometry cabinet has an introductory tray on top and then it has several drawers with different shapes of varying sizes. So that's the circle drawer there. It also has a triangle drawer. This is the polygon drawer with it has different numbers of sides on each shape. And that is our library. Our other homeschooling space is our dining area, which is connected to our kitchen where I'm standing now. This is my between meals tablecloth. I take it off when we have meals or when we do art or any other messy projects. On the wall in here, we have shelves for storage and decor a large chalkboard in the middle, which I actually made myself, and room on the wall for lots of artwork. I actually haven't gotten to decorating in here yet. Over here you can see our paint boards tucked away in the corner. Above them are our harvest baskets. The bottom two shelves have dining items, so I'm not going to go into those right now. But the top shelf here has our calendar peg dolls. I also have some candlesticks in the corner and our tabletop cards from our radish kit tucked away in the other corner there. This second shelf has our nature journals as well as our art books. And we have some field guides here and some drawing books to help us with journaling in our nature journals. On this wall shelf, starting on the left, I actually have a bunch of seed catalogs in that magazine holder, and that floral binder there is my garden journal. The other two binders are my kids' writing binders. My daughter's has copy work and writing worksheets in it, and my son's has pre-writing worksheets in it. The purple binder is my teacher's notes for Quiver Veros. 
These two clear boxes hold art supplies, so the top one has a bunch of painting supplies, and the bottom one has clay and other kind of random art supplies that we use regularly. Then we have a bunch of assorted papers for our art projects, as well as art books, including our artistic pursuits books. Then we have a caddy on the right here that has all sorts of writing implements, markers, colored pencils, crayons, as well as some scissors, child size, and some glue. This large chalkboard in the middle I actually made with plywood and chalkboard paint and the frame is actually made with molding that I stained and painted um, and I love how it turned out. This is my first attempt at Waldorf art so for September I did a pear tree and an apple tree because I thought it was appropriate to our area at this time of year. Underneath I have some pictures of art by Alexander Calder and a picture of Alexander Calder himself and I just uh, hung that up with some clothespin yeah. and some twine. And I want to show you our learning tower. I've had this since my oldest was a toddler and I've used it quite frequently with the kids in the kitchen to just help them be more involved. And above it on the wall we currently have some cave art inspired chalk drawings from our prehistory unit. And that ends our tour. Thank you so much for watching today. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. I will be posting more homeschooling content along with the occasional gardening and baby content. So keep an eye out for all that. And until then, I will talk to you later.